Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about CryEngine. And specifically, what the heck is going on with CryEngine? Now, CryEngine at one point in time was one of the most exciting game engines available, considered to be a bit of a meme in terms of the power that uh, it could scale up to use on the hardware of the day. The expression, yes, but can it run Far Cry, uh, was used to refer to powerful PCs all the way up to supercomputers. It's still used to this day. People still make that joke, yeah, but can it run Far Cry? And there's a reason for that. Far Cry was a damned pretty game. It still is today, even though this was released back in 2008. And, four. and that is the beginning of CryEngine. CryEngine actually started life as a tech demo for NVIDIA that was evolved into a game engine that was ultimately used to create Far Cry. Uh, now, paradoxically today, you could look at CryEngine as being one of the most successful failed game engines or the most uh, biggest failure success of game engines today, depending on how you want to look at it. It's on the verge of irrelevancy, which is kind of insane because it has also been used to make billions of dollars worth of games. So there is a paradox going on there with CryEngine, and we're going to look today at what's going on with CryEngine and what we can expect from it in the future, but first we need to look a little bit at the past. So CryEngine has been used to make a ton of high-profile games over the year. Uh, Ubisoft actually acquired the license to Far Cry IP, which is how they started things out, uh, and then on top of that, um, Crytek also licensed them CryEngine, which they've used to this day, uh, all the way up to the release of Far Cry 6. Uh, Ubisoft used their own custom fork of it. They called Dunia or Dunia. Now, we don't know how much at the end of the day of Dunia was still based off of the old CryEngine li they licensed years back. Of course, they've added to it and added to it and took stuff out and so on. So things evolved massively since that initial release. But all the way up to Far Cry 6, the Dunia engine was actually used internally at Ubisoft. Now, they have kind of stopped with that code base. So that is a thing of the past. I believe Far Cry 6 is going to be the last... Uh, game in the series that has ties back to CryEngine, but that's a pretty damn good legacy, and those games alone have probably sold well over a billion dollars for the entire franchise. And then speaking of forks, CryEngine was also licensed to Amazon when they launched their doomed a Amazon game division. Amazon decided that they wanted to get into gaming in a big way, and they wanted to have a common game engine between their studios. So they licensed CryEngine, I think it was CryEngine 3.3, somewhere in that neighborhood, and they rebranded it as Lumberyard. Of course, they started doing their own thing with Lumberyard, added the gem system, did a whole bunch of changes, etc. And they used it internally for a couple of projects. Most of them didn't work out that well. Amazon Gaming just was not a successful venture. Probably the most successful thing that came out of them. And the highest profile Lumberyard title, minus one, uh, would be um, New World. And New World is still being developed to this day, has sold pretty well. It's probably the biggest success that Amazon has seen, I would say, for sure. And then there is another licensee of uh, Lumberyard, and that is Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen itself, I think, has made close to a billion dollars at this point. Star Citizen started off life as a CryEngine. Uh, based game, uh, and then when I think more or less what it boiled down to is once Amazon made more preferential licensing terms available, they poured it over and basically went from there. I think it was just a way for them to save money. And at this point in time, uh, Star Citizen has so modified that game engine, we don't know how much CryEngine still exists. We also don't know if that's a real game or not at this point in time, or just a money-making machine. So Crytek also continued to use CryEngine in-house for several games over the last decade. This includes titles like the Crisis series, which you get are stunningly pretty. Uh, we've got Rise, Son of Rome, The Climb, uh, 1 and 2 VR titles, and probably their most success successful title, at least in recent years, is the Hunt Showdown series. Uh, it's also used by third parties to make games such as MechWarrior Online, which I was a massive addict of, Homefront Revolution, Prey, the reboot in 2017, not the original one that was built off the Quake engine, State of Decay, Wolston, Lord of Mayhem, and probably the most high-profile recent release using CryEngine is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which was based off of Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, which used a highly modified version of CryEngine that they have continued to modify in-house. So even right up to 2025, there are still very successful games being shipped using the CryEngine at this point in time. So with such a storied history and two recent games delivered using CryEngine, it clearly must be alive and kicking, right? 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 Well, that's where it starts to get tricky. CryEngine is still obviously being developed and updated by Crytek, especially for their Hunt games. Now, the Hunt games are definitely what have kept Crytek in business, we've got to be honest here, uh, which have become live service titles with continuous updates. So 
there's where the most of the development for CryEngine is focused on facilitating the Hunt series of games. Now jumping into the present and looking at the future, that's where things start to look a lot more ominous for CryEngine in Crytek. So uh, Crytek themselves announced a new version of Crisis in the works back in 2022, but earlier in 2025, it was announced that it was put on hold. At the same time, Crytek announced layoffs of 15% of its workforce of around 400 people. That would be 15% of 400, not that 400 was 15%. They did, however, during these layoffs, announce the CEO saying he believes in the future of Crytek. We will continue to expand and evolve Hunt Showdown 1896 with great content and drive our strategy for our engine, CryEngine. So they're still investing into CryEngine, as they've publicly stated, in 2025. So CryEngine is still focused at Crytek and still people are working on it. Now, what about third-party developers that want to license it? That's like where you and I kind of people come in. Uh, with the release of CryEngine 5 all the way back in 2016, Crytek moved CryEngine to a royalty-based model with a 5% of revenue royalty. Since then, we saw several updates until CryEngine 5.7 LTS version, which was released in April of 2022. Since then, nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. Nothing, at least not publicly. There was a presentation about software ray tracing and Android platforms at GDC. I believe that was 2023. Uh, I do not believe those were ever publicly made available. There was an update to the public facing documentation system in 2024 and nothing else. It was also stated on their Discord servers that the 5.7 branch would be the last public release of the 5.x branches. So privately, or at least internal to Crytek, CryEngine is still being updated, but details are somewhat sparse. They announced that CryEngine 5.11 for the Hunt Showdown in 2024. This added support for next-gen consoles, end-of-lived earlier consoles. Uh, in the 5.11 release were several performance improvements, under-the-hood tech debt fixes, uh, new designer tools, as well as a new UI framework replacing the old scale form UI system with scale form basically being a dead product at this point in time. Problem is 5.11 was never made available to the public. So if you start with CryEngine today, you're getting CryEngine 5.7 LTS. The fact that they're also not making this available publicly to the version that you or I can download is a little discouraging about how much they care about these developer relationships. They you just don't seem to be going on there. So in a nutshell, that is as much as we can say. It looks like Crytek are still committed to the development of CryEngine. They are still supporting it for their own games and a handful of other developers. Unfortunately, to people like you or I that are trying to evaluate if we should use this going forward, 5.7 LTS version, no. Don't do it at all. Now, is there the possibility that we will see a CryEngine 6 and they will reboot their developer program and it becomes a worthwhile engine to license? Definitely. But the radio silence over the last several years. And again, CryTech was never really great at being an engine vendor in terms of offering support and documentation, etc. Anyways, so unless there's sort of a realignment and a big reveal for CryEngine 6, which personally I would love to see happen, but as it stands right now, if you're looking at CryEngine 5.7 and thinking, should I start and make my game with it? The answer is probably no. Are we going to see CryEngine in the future? Don't know. Can't tell you that, unfortunately. So ladies and gentlemen, that was a bit of a look at the history of CryEngine, where it has gone, and where it is potentially going. Let me know what you think. Do you think CryEngine is going to make a bounce back with the release of CryEngine 6? Do you think we're even going to get a public release of CryEngine 6? Let me know that in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.